when you're talking about digital control schemes, it doesn't matter what manufacturer you're talking about. They all basically break down into the these following categories. You can have an individual element scheme, which means that you go through and you program each element individually. You can have a binary scheme, which is just ones and zeros. You can have a matrix scheme, which is ones and zeros on a chart. Or you can have arithmetic, which is how Schweitzer does it. So you everything is broken down into uh, arithmetic symbols. And then you can have a logic system, which is kind of like what I showed you previously. So with you, when you have an individual element control scheme, each protective element is create is entered individually. There's no interaction with other protective elements. So that makes it very simple to understand, operate, and program. And so you normally set up the pickup timing, outputs, and whatever inputs are related to the element. So you can block it with uh, an input if you want, such as a loss of potential or something like that. And here is from a Beckwith relay. This is an individual element control scheme. You can see on the top, you type in the tap setting. You type in a time dial. You select what kind of voltage control you're going to use. You choose your curve. And then you put a checkbox in every output that will turn on when this element turns on. And then if you want to block it with anything, then you just look at the blocking input. So in this case, if input one operates, this element will be blocked. Or if the fuse loss, which is what that FL stands for, then this element will be blocked. A binary control scheme basically has a little chart with zeros and ones. So the pickup and timing is entered in a completely different box from the outputs and controls. And then the inputs and outputs are assigned with ones and zeros, where one equals on and zero equals off. So this is probably from a KCGG or an Alstom relay. And you can see that in the third row down or fourth row down where it says TO greater than, that means uh, basically 51 in North American terms. And if you look down, if that element operates, then uh, relays 0, 1, and 2 will all operate. And the same thing for if the instantaneous overcurrent and then the second instantaneous overcurrent. Because those are the only three rows that have 1s in them. The zeros means don't do, uh, means don't do anything. The matrix scheme is very similar. This is from a Beckwith relay. This is their wonderful summary chart. And again, pickup and timing is entered separately from the outputs and controls. The inputs and outputs are assigned with ones and zeros and displayed as a matrix where the dots are the ones and then zeros are not used. So in this case, that first element, the 24 definite time number one, if it operates, it's going to operate output seven and output one. And it's not going to, nothing can block that element. Whereas if you have an under voltage, which is the 27 element, it'll operate output eight but it will be blocked if you have a fuse loss or input one operates. The arithmetic scheme uses pickup and timing is entered separately from the outputs and controls, just like the last couple of, uh, of uh, schemes. The logic is created using element labels and operators. So those are all those little uh, lovely uh, word or not words, but letters and numbers in that chart that I showed you earlier. And the operators are logic gates, and it's expressed as a mathematical equation. So if you see a plus sign, that means or, which is very confusing. So if you're not used to it, the thing you always have to do when you're looking at a logic equation is, it, is when you see that plus sign, you have to say out loud or in your head, or. The AND gate is the star, so the multiplication symbol. And NOT is the exclamation point. And then the parentheses, that basically lets you group things together. And the rising edge means that instead of always being on whenever that word bit is on, only when it turns on the first time. And the falling edge is the reverse, so it'll only turn on if it, if it goes from a 1 to a 0 the first time. So if you want to look at a, a arithmetic, scheme, arithmetic scheme versus an electrical schematic, that's what you've got right here. The very first one on the left is A plus B. Now that plus, that was I should not have said that because that makes you think and. When it's not and, it's or. So I always try and read A or B. And that would be two contacts in parallel. If you see A and B, that's two contacts in series. If you see not A and not B, that's two con normally closed contacts in series. 
And then if you see not A or not B, that would be two normally closed contacts in parallel. This is the logic control scheme, so it looks like a typical logic diagram. So if you look at the electrical on the left, you have N1 and 51T1. Those are two contacts in series, so that means an AND gate. So if you look at the logic diagram on the right, you have N1 on the top and 51T1 underneath it, and they both go into an AND gate. And then we have N1 and 50T1 in series, so that's another AND gate. Both of those contacts, or both sets of those contacts, are in parallel, so that's an OR gate. So that's how you translate a logic diagram, or you translate from an electrical diagram into a logic diagram. And this is what that would look like in a GE software. So this is what they call flex logic. And basically, you, uh, you set up your inputs in columns, and then it'll also draw a chart for you of the logic diagram to make it understand, to make you help you understand it. So here is a chart that combines all of the different uh, schemes. So if I have an electrical schematic with two contacts in parallel, in binary, that would mean if it was or across, that would mean two ones together. Or if or was down, that would mean an A, B with a one and one like that. And then you can have it also shown as a matrix. In math, that would be A or B. And then you can have a logic scheme. So you can see you can translate from one scheme to another, or you can just translate everything to electrical to help you understand what relays are supposed to do. So this particular uh, logic scheme could be quite complicated, but you can break it down into its base components. You can use simple substitution to understand the logic. So if I go from the, if my logic says 50, 51 into an OR gate, like I said before, that's two contacts in parallel. Or if I have an N1 and an AND going into a 20, or sorry, an N1 and a 27 going into an AND gate, that would be two contacts in parallel or in series. Now, if it's knotted, if it's a 52A and then you knot it, then that would be the same thing as having a normally closed version of that N1, like it's shown on the left-hand side. And we already went in detail about two contacts or in series and in parallel to create that kind of logic diagram. Now here, with uh, this one, you can see that we have a contact called N1, and it's in series with a contact called 51T1 and 50T1. So the N1 goes into the AND gate, and then the two contacts that are in parallel, they're an OR gate, so they go together into an OR gate, and the output from that OR gate goes into the AND gate. With a math equation, this is the same uh, things that we had before, we have N1 and 27, they're both in series, so that means N1 and, that's what that asterisk means, 27. And if you had a normally closed version of that, you would put a knot in front of N1 and 27. 